This is Periphera, the most primitive of all animals in the uh, animal kingdom. The phyla is the sponges. We go to the next, which starts to have some sensory uh, capabilities. All of its body systems are kind of through absorption. And this is Cnidarian, the stinging tentacle critters. This is a neat jellyfish. Now we're going to start getting into one of the very first pass-through digestive systems. This is the nematodes, the, the worms. This one happens to be a roundworm, starts to have a nervous capability, um, starting to have some organ systems. And then we go on to flatworms, the platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes means flat worms. Now they have actually light sensing capabilities. Those are actually the eye spots that you see right here. And then we go into the next one that's got the first closed circulatory system, which is Annelida. Now, Annelida doesn't really have a heart like per se, but there are rings on it that pump the blood, which is hemoglobin, through the body. And they actually have the first red blood. Um, and this is Annelida segmented worms. And here's a cross section of what their bodies look like. And they actually start to have a digestive system and a, a stomach like structure. Then we go into gastropods and the mollusca group. Mollusca means muscled. Now, gastropod means stomach foot. Now, he has like a fully developed stomach in there and a heart and kidneys, and he starts having organ systems and a pretty well-developed reproductive system. And they actually have eyeballs. There's little eyes up here on the ends of the antenna. Now, the first highly developed eye appears in cephalopoda. Now cephalopoda is head foot. Now head footed animals are the octopus, the squid, the cuttlefish, and the nautilus. Now he has hearts in his legs and hearts in his body, and they have gill systems in a highly developed brain that actually can solve puzzles. The next is arthropod, which means jointed foot. In the first one of the arthropods is the insecta. They have six legs. They have a nervous system that is actually developed along a central cord, and they have a little brain-like structure. Now, the first one to have lung-type capabilities is arachnida. Arachnids have eight legs. Primarily, it includes the scorpions and the spiders, and there's a few crabs in the group. Now, these guys are have a lung uh, in an open circulatory system, and they're, they're called book lungs in the bottom of their body, and that's where they absorb the oxygen and release the CO2. Now, the one that's missing here is crustacea. Uh, there was supposed to be a mantis strip right here. Maybe we'll see it. Maybe we won't. Um, then we get into chordata. Chordata means central nervous system, and this whole phyla has relatively common embryology. Here's where the embryology really makes the big shift between fish, amphibians, reptiles, and uh, the mammals. Now here's the bone structures. They all have five fingers, legs, arms, a central spine, a well-developed brain. And now how, after the early development, you start getting the non-skeletal um, fish called agnatha. They're jawless fish. They're the sucker family, lampreys, agnatha, hagfish, rumoras. In chordata, uh, you get, after that, you get into chondrichthys. Those are the cartilage fish. That includes sturgeon, sharks, and rays. Um, they're pretty cool. They have the only bone in their body really is their jaw. And then after that, you get into osteichthys, which is the bony fish. Now, bony fish have a well-developed um, brain, central nervous system, and many of them um, can go through something where they actually can change genders. A lot of the animals up until now are hermaphroditic, meaning that they have both genders. Now, after them, we get into amphibian. Amphibian, now they're really cool because they have all these great uh, adaptations. They go through metamorphosis. They can breathe through their skin, their lungs, and their gills. And because of that metamorphosis, um, it gives them some really interesting capabilities. Now, there's some in this group that if you chopped off their legs, they'd grow brand new ones. The axolotl is one of the most studied right now. 
After this, we go into reptilia. Now here's a crocodile, central uh, nervous system, whole well-developed brain. There's a thing called synapsid and diapsid, and that's what separates the reptiles from the dinosaurs. And when we go into dinosaurs, we're going to start going into, we're going to talk about uh, the birds because they are the first truly, totally endothermic critters. The birds have well-developed uh, everything, stomachs. Their lungs are a little different than ours, um, but the endothermic part of them makes them able to move without worrying about being in sunlight. Now, there was one uh, group in Ostichthys that is endothermic, and that is the tuna. Now, we go into the first low metabolic rate mammal that lays eggs. There are five in that, the entire group. Um, they are called mars, uh, monotremes. Platypus and echidna are the two in the group that are still around. And then we go into marsupials, and marsupials have the ability to, just like the echidna, they don't put a lot of energy into reproduction. Their, their baby, their body's immune system kicks out the baby. That makes the mother more likely to survive in case the environment changes drastically. So if Joey here, if she, she would kick him out of the pouch if there was no food available and give up instead of dying. Now, the one group that isn't here is the therans, which are what all the humans are. And those are animals like us, you and I, that have uh, placental babies that will go to long term and then the mother nurses them to maturity. And that is evolution 2019.